Introduction to recursion. So here's a bit of code. We know very well what's going to happen here. This is going to iterate five times saying hello, happy days. But we can actually do this code, make it repeat, but without using a loop. Here's something I did earlier. Let's trace it through. Here's a function. I've called it recursive hello. We're passing into it the number five. Five times. If our count, which is five, is greater than zero, it's going to display hello. So it'll display hello. Count will then go down by one. So count will be now four. And what will happen is this cause itself here to run again but instead of this being five this will now be four it will run count is greater than zero print hello this beforehand was count equal um, count minus one so now this is going to become three we call it again it runs this will become two then it'll become one And then it'll become zero. And when it becomes zero, the code finishes. So if I run it, there we go. This is called recursion. It's basically where a function calls itself leading towards what we call a base case. This is the base case. It's like the exit criteria, the criteria for the loop to, st to stop basically. This will be the same as if we did this as a while loop. While count is greater than zero, do this. Okay, so let's look at another example using factorial. Factorial is a concept which is used in probability, statistics, etc. And it's represented where you see a non-negative number followed by an exclamation mark. So how it works is the following. It's probably easier for me to start backwards and looking at 4. So if we're saying factorial 4, it would equal 4 multiplied by 3 because that's the number before 4. Multiplied by 2 because that's the number before 3 multiplied by one, because that's the number before two. And that will give us our answer for factorial four is 24. So if we did the same for three, we take the number three, multiply it by the number before it, multiply it by the number before it to give us our answer. Same with two, we take our two, multiply it before the number before it to give us our answer. One gives us one, zero gives us one. So this, these two results are exactly the same. So Pause the video and see if you can write this as an iterative function yourself in Python. So here's a solution. Result is one by default. If we entered in the number one, this is going to return to first one because this code will never run. And it's going to return 1 because, as we know, factorial 1 is 1. However, if we were to enter in a number which is above 1, let's say 4, whilst n is bigger than 4, sorry, bigger than 1, we're going to take our 4 and multiply it by our result, which is 1. So that'll give us four for our result. And n, which is also four, will go down to three. So n will be three. So three is greater than one. What is four multiplied by three, because this was n before. So that will give us <coughs> 12 in our result and goes down again to two at loops. This time it's gonna be what is 12 times two, which is gonna be 24. This will be result, remember this will be n 
and being 2 is all being 12 and goes down by 1 so n is at 1 now whilst n is greater than 1 but it's not greater than 1 I forgot to change result by the way previously so 12 multiplied by 2 is 24 result should be 24 4 times 3 five times 2 times 1 24 so if I do all of this code and let's do 4 it gives us 24 this is the iterative version of doing factorial using a loop let's see what this looks like now using recursion if you want to give this a go yourself first by all means give it a go right so if you're doing this using recursion i'm just going to make a function i don't know what i'm just doing b and right step one what is going to be our base case when do we want this to stop we want this to stop when n becomes one or zero They're two because that's the end. Zero and one, we can't go any further than that. <coughs> so, if n equals zero, or n equals one, so that's our base case. If that's the case, we're gonna return one. Otherwise, we're going to return n multiply by our factor recursive function n minus 1. So print factorial recursive 5. And we run it. If I change it to 4, and we run it. So how does this work? So the concept of how recursion works is it uses stacks. So I'm going to show you how a stack basically operates to perform this bad boy here to give us, if we were to send in five, to output 120. How this actually works? How do we trace it through? So we'll get start. By the way, I've just changed this to FR because it's quick for me to write from factorial recursive being lazy. So we've got our initial core. And our initial core is I'm going to pass in 5. So it's going to be fr 5. And that is basically 5 multiplied by fr 4. So fr one word 4. And that would be Our first um, node you can argue onto a stack or first element on our stack so that's our initial call then what's going to happen is the following let's redraw our stack but this time it's going to be at the top of our stack our next one which is fr4 so we're calling fr we're passing 4 and it's going to be 4 multiplied by fr3 underneath it in our stack will still be fr5 5 times fr4 remember a stack is last in first out so when we push an item it goes to the top so we're going to push our next item onto our stack which is going to be fr3 which will be 3 multiplied by fr2 underneath that we're going to have fr4 which is 4 multiplied by fr3 and then we have our initial function call which is fr5 which is 5 multiplied by fr4 and then we do this again fr2 which is basically I really hate writing 2 multiplied by, that's a 2 by the way, fr1. And then we've got our fr3, 3 multiplied by fr2. 
then we've got our FR4. which is 4 multiplied by FR3 and then we've got our initial call which is FR5 which is 5 multiplied by FR4 okay that leaves us with our final one which is going to be Our base case so that'll be fr1 but we're not going to be doing anything else apart from return our base case which is one then you'll have our fr2 you know what? I must be able to copy and paste this I can't be bothered to keep doing this do 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 arc you know what, I need to get better software. If anyone knows any better software out there that I can use, that would be amazing. Hello, I just said duplicate. Oh yeah, I forgot you don't like doing that. Duplicate, let's do it this way. There you go, nice cheat. Okay, so we call this concept winding. Where we're just basically pushing our function calls onto the stack. But we're not done, we now need to unwind the stack and we'll do that on the next whiteboard so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually pop from our stack we're going to unwind so how's that going to work well let me just draw a line here we take our first um, element which is our base case so it's Actually, it's FR, isn't it? FR, 1, and we know that we're returning 1. So it returns 1. We're then going to do FR, 2. So we take the 1, and we take the 2. So inside of this, it'll be 2 multiplied by 1 which is now going to return for us 2. So this is one element, this is another element. We're now going to do FR3, which is going to take R3 and multiply it by 2, and it's going to return 6. But we're still in the stack, so it's not over yet. We're now going to do FR4. Our FR4 is going to take R4 and multiply it by 6, and it's going to return 24. We then got FR5, which is going to take R5 oops, and multiply it by 24, and that will return 120. This is the basically now top of our stack. There's no more elements after it. So 120 is the final result. So what we had to do was wind and unwind. Let me show you how this looks like in a table format. And let's bring it right back to over here. This is us adding to our stack. Keep in mind that this would be, by the end of this, the top of the stack, once we wind. When we unwind, we start on the top of the stack. This is what happens inside the function. This is what's returned. So now this has been popped. We're now onto this one. This is what happens inside the function, this calculation. This is what's returned. It's been popped. In memory is two. We then do this one and pop it and do this one. And remember, every time we pop, the top of stack will go down. So now we'll be here, top of stack, the final one. 
pop, and this is our final result, 120. Okay, what I want you to do is turn this pseudocode into Python, and I want you to then call the function in Python using the following parameters. Pause the video, give it a go yourself. And if you did it correct, you should have 32, one and zero as your output. Here's the code. So that is the code. What I'd like you to do now is see whether or not you can turn this into a trace table slash stack. So you can show the process of winding and unwinding. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and then give it a go yourself first. So as a table, we normally have the core stack level as a column. That's what's really neat. We then have a function core. Action and function. And output in this case, because there are some outputs. Hence the print. Okay, so the first item we push onto our stack is gonna be 15 and 10. In fact, let's do, I'm gonna do 10 and 15 because I wanna show you the result for that. So I'm gonna pull 10 and 15. So my function call would be um, I'm going to do u for unknown, so my function is just called u. 10, 15. Actually in the function, so what's going to happen? Well, 10 is less than 15, so we're going to print 10 plus uh, 15, so it's going to output 25. And I'm just going to put in here, well, I don't really need this column, this is just for me to explain to you. So 10 is less than 15, so print the 25 because we do 10 plus 15. Two. So remember, we're winding at the moment. We're not returning anything, we're just winding it up. U, this time, is going to be 11 and 15. Why is it going to be 11 and 15? Well, I'm hoping that's going to be quite obvious. X plus 1. X was 10, now it's 11. 15, Y stays the same. So action in the function, 11 is less than 15, so print. Remember, this is just like an optional column and doing this to help demonstrate that we're doing this again. So we're gonna print, and this time it's gonna be 26. Why is it gonna be 26? Because we are printing 11 plus 15 here. Three, we do a call. 12 and 15 this time. 12 is less than 15. My toilet's making weird noises. I might go and check that out in a second. So 12 is less than 15. I don't know why I've just done that little line there. So, oh, there, there you go. Okay, so 12 is less than 15. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna print. And this time we're gonna print 27. core, u, 13, 15, we're still winding at the moment, 13 is less than 15, so we're going to print 28, 
five, you, 14, that's meant to be a comma, comma, 15, 14 is less than 15, so we're going to, bear with me for a second, print, and we're going to print 29, 6, you, 15, 15, this is going to be different, 15 equals 15, if 15 equals 15, we're going to return 1. There's no output for this. It just returns 1. Now we're going to be, now that we've reached our base case, we are going to very simply start to unwind our stack. So our top of stack has been popped. Return one. Oops, my bad. It should be now onto five. And we're going to call unknown 14, 15. And all we need to do now, because it's going to be this. Well, I've just marked up there. It's going to be one multiplied by, so that one. Multiply one, multiply by, and it's going to be two. So it's going to be the one multiplied by the two. And that's going to return that as our calculation. So IE is going to return two. So I go down again and I'll go down to 4 4 is going to be U 13 15 and the action in the function is going to be the result of this which is 2 multiplied by 2 because inside of here that's what the return is. Multiply by 2. If it was this, it would be divided by 2. Well, div to get no remainder. I'm going to pause. There's something weird going on. All right, forget it. I'm going to call the plumber in a second. Anyway, so this is being returned. So it's going to be 4. So when we unwind again, And we're going to have u, I think it is obviously going to be 12, 15. And it's going to return this 4 multiplied by 2, which is going to be returned. Which will give us 8. Keep that in mind, 8. So when we go to the next one, It's going to be 8 multiplied by 2, which is being returned, which is going to be 16. And finally, our top of stack, which is our original number, 10, 15, which is passed in. It's going to be our 16 multiplied by 2, which is returned, which will give us 32. What I should have done, another column called return value. Yo, why are you not right? There you go, return value. And then obviously there's no returns here because it's just outputs based on the code. But when we do unwind, I can put like four in here, eight in here, 16 in here, 32 in here. And there we go. This would be the table. Well, we very simply, let me just make a differentiator to where we start unwinding. 
when we reach the base case, we can unwind. Maybe I should put a one here as well, and a two here for our return values. Okay, let's make this a little bit harder. Turn this into its iterative version. So how would you do this code as a loop? Okay, so how do we come up with this? Well, first things first, we look at the base case. Return one. Now, here's the thing, this will always happen. The base case will always happen in recursion. So it's always gonna have in the code, the result being one, the total being a one, whatever you wanna call it. So as it always happens, we declare it first, result equals one. Now we look at, our logic. We've got three different conditions within this code. This basically, this recursion keeps going until x equals y. So this will keep going over and over and over again until x equals y. So with our iterative version, we want to keep it looping whilst x doesn't equal y, which is what we've got here. Whilst x doesn't equal y, keep looping. You'll notice that both the else and this if both have a print x plus y. So it happens for both. So we put it here because it displays. If x doesn't equal y, then we print x plus y. It doesn't matter which way we go. But now we focus on this bit because this is where it is different. If x is less than y, what we want to do is make x go up by one. That's one of the things which happens in this condition, the selection, x goes up by one. But we've also got our result, which is what we're returning. So what we wanna do with that is multiply it by two. So result equals result multiplied by two. Otherwise, take away one from x and we basically get this variable called result and we div it by two and so x will keep changing y stays the same which is what happens in here y stays the same all the way through y is the same y is the same so we don't need this to do anything this would be our result, which is what we've got here. So result equals result multiplied by two. And it loops again and again and again and again. So if we play this out, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. We're passing in 10 and 15, 10 and 15. And we're gonna make a variable called result in a table. And I'm gonna do X, I'm gonna do Y x is passed in okay by doing all of this hopefully we'll get to the same output as what we had before and the same um, final return value so let's trace this through result starts on one x is 10 this is 15 we then have uh, uh, 25. X then goes up, well, X is less than Y. So X goes up by one. Now we take our result, which is gonna be one multiplied by two, gives us two. That loops again. We're then going to display X plus Y, which is 26. X goes up again to make it 12. Our result will be two times two, which is four. It then loops again. So it's gonna be 27 here. Five, no, it's not five, I'm an idiot. X goes up by one, 13, 15, um, 
28. 4 times 2 is 8. Then x goes, uh, do we do x goes up? Yeah. Then, I think I did that in the wrong order. Yeah, I should have done that first and then output. So let's get back to this again. Okay, x goes up by 1, so it's going to be on 14, 15. Um, result would be 8 times 2, which is 16. And 14 plus 15 gives us 29. And then we're going to have uh, loops again. So we're still inside this loop. X plus 1 is 15. 15. Um, result equals 16 times 2, which is 32. It goes back to the start of the loop, but 15 equals 15, so it doesn't do anything else here. And it out returns result, which is 32. There you go. So a recap on how we turn this into the iterative version. Take the base case. The base case in this situation is going to return 1. So I sign that. This is always going to happen at the beginning of our code. Always going to happen. Our condition is x equals y. So we want to keep repeating this whilst x doesn't equal y. This happens in both of our selection conditions. So we might as well just shove it here, print x plus y. This is the first thing which happens before it does any calculations. We then do our if statement, if x is less than y. We then want to increment x by one, because that happens this condition works in the selection. And then what we want to do is take our result and multiply it by two. Otherwise, divide it by two. And we remember, oh, this should be, um, yes, yeah, sorry. But this time, minus one, minus one. And there we go.